Hi, everyone. It's Roma Fisher from Spirit Alive Television. Thank you for tuning in again. Thank you, my partners and friends across Canada. We value your friendship and your support. We couldn't do this without you, so you're very special to us. And we've been praying for you. We believe in God for all of your needs. And every time we think of you, just like Paul said, we say, thank God for you. And we pray for you. We believe in God's best for you. And after the program, at the end, we're going to pray with you before we cut out. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to be right back. You know, whatever you're doing in life, whatever kind of occupation you're in right now, whatever project you might be doing, the Lord says you can be weary. If something happens and you fall, you discover that you're not as spiritual as you are. Patience is a virtue that the world devalues today. We have been taught to have things much quickly in this life. Being patient means the quality of not surrendering to circumstances. I'm talking about negative things that's going on. Hello, viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Learning to be patient to the end. Learning to be patient to the end. Matthew 10, 22 says, And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. This is Jesus talking to his disciples before he left. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. I want to take that phrase, he that endures to the end shall be saved. Or, you know, shall you know, you could use a, another word. You can use another word for have victory or, or you might live or whatever it is. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let us not be weary in well-doing. You know, whatever you're doing in life, whatever kind of occupation you're in right now, whatever project you might be doing, the Lord says you can be weary. If God tells you don't be weary, and then it must be that you can be weary and that your potential to be weary or to be tired out. He says in there, for in due season or somewhere along the line, we shall reap if we faint not. Somebody said this, if you quit, it's like you never started. But if you continue, you will reap whatever it is that you're doing. It's going to pay off. In other words, it's a payoff at the end. The idea of this message tonight is that sometimes you just might have to wait a little bit longer to get what you want. Sometimes you might have to wait just a little bit longer in order for you to get what you want. And there are times in my life, in my own personal life, that I had to wait longer, that I had to endure things, that I put up with things, put up with people, put up with my own life, put up with myself, <laughs> put up with situations, I just had to do it because I know it's not going to be the same. You know, you're not going to always be the same. As, 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 as much as you think you'll be the same, you're going to change. Everybody's getting older. I didn't almost look like this. <laughs> In fact, there's days I look worse than this. But, but there's days, you know, you know, you get those days when you think, man, I'm, I'm doing real good. And something happens and you fall, you discover that you're not as spiritual as you are. You know, it's, it's easy to be spiritual all alone. But when you have to work with people you don't like or they rub you the wrong way, you know, you, can, you kind of reconsider that thought, right? So, so I, I think about those times, you know, uh, when I think I'm, I was doing well. So the Bible says that it's by faith that we receive the promises of God. Over here in the scripture, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 33, the New Living Translation says, By faith these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, 
and receive what God had promised him. They shut the mouths of lions. So, you know, it took, it took faith for them to, to, to receive what God promises. It's going to take some faith for you or your trust in God or your reliance on God, your dependence on God. It's going to take some time for you to see the promise fulfilled in your life. I found a couple of scriptures that says, not one of God's promises ever fails. It talks about Joshua. At the end of his life, he says, every promise that God had, be- had told us never failed. If you Google that or if you, if you look in your Bible, uh, uh, you know, if your Bible app, you'll find out that not one of, not one, type in there, not one of God's promises failed. You'll come up with scriptures. It'll tell you that God's promises will not fail. And sometimes you might have to wait a little bit longer. Some of the promises of God depends on other people around you. Because God waits for some people. Sometimes it takes longer. Especially if you're married. If you guys consider getting married someday, remember this. That, you know, God has to wait for your mate to make some decisions. Right? It takes, it takes some time. I know that, uh, Pastor Ken, it takes time to, to come together. Right, honey? It takes time. Sometimes I had to wait for you for a long time. <laughs> right, Viola? You're laughing right now. But uh, it takes time to wait for Ernie to get up in the morning <laughs> and get to the mall by 3.30. It takes time for the chicken to cook. <laughs> right, boys? So in, the, in, in our world, you ever notice that patience is, is, little, is a little bit devalued? We have a lot, of, a lot of things that everything's fast and quick. I want it right now. I know when I, when I go to the drive through my wife says, or when we come up to a stop sign and someone is taking their time, they don't know where to turn left or right. Or if they're turning right, they're not turning when they should be. When cars are a mile away, they're still not turning. So I'm, I'm talking to myself, my wife's watching me, and I'm complaining. And she says, she says to me, do you have to do this? I said, do what? <laughs> and complain about the driver in front of you. Somebody said, you know, um, what is that thing about the guy? says, you know, do you ever notice that when you're driving, that people who drive faster than you, they're maniacs? <laughs> if they're driving slower... They're what? Idiots. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny. We're like that. You know, we, 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 want to, we want everything to move faster. We want the traffic to flow nicely. So you can get to somewhere on time. But you should have got up earlier. <laughs> so anyway, patience is a virtue that the world devalues today. We have been taught to have things much quickly in this life. When we're walking by faith, it requires patience in order to obtain the promises of God. Patience is very important in this life, in this life of faith. It says here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, the New Living Translation. So what does being patient mean? Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. You know, if 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 you know what God's will is for your life, and if, if you're trying to follow the will of God for your life, if you become impatient, you try to speed things up and hurry the things, whatever promises God, God has for you. So you make decisions, so you try to hurry it up to help God out. And you get into trouble. So, you know, you have to be patient. You have to trust God. You have to rely on Him and trust that He's going to fulfill His promise. You know that someday you'll get married. But you just don't marry anybody. Right? Or, you know, when you're having, when you're a patient. One meaning of patience means, it means endurance. It means that you can stand or stay right where you are no matter what happens. You're going to stand right there. Because you know, you're not going to change your mind about it. You know this is going to happen. You understand this. What's happening in your life now is not always going to be what it's like right now. You're not going to always be where you're at. Things are going to change. Right? 
Things are going to change. And, and we want to speed everything up. And there's a reason why you're at a certain level at a certain stage in life. Because maybe if you bolted ahead, you wouldn't be able to handle more money or handle more success. Some people, if they have success, they go down because their character or whatever hasn't been built up yet. It takes time to develop. Because sometimes if you think, if I just had that car, maybe if you had that car, you might crash it. I don't know why I keep looking at you, but I'm, you look friendly enough so I can talk, look to you. Okay, so having patience means that you'll stand unwaveringly without weakening, but moving ahead on, at, a, at a steady pace. So having patience means you will stand unwaveringly, that's, that's without a doubt, without weakening. You're not going to get weaker, you're just going to stay the same, you're going to endure, you're going to move ahead, move ahead at a steady pace. And you know you're on the right track. You know, it's wonderful to know that you're on the right track, because when you're, on the right, when you're walking with God in His will, then you're not going to try to disturb what you have to make it to make things like, you know, to make it go quicker. So A, number one, A means, uh, patience means that you're going uh, you're gonna, to you're gonna be able to abide under pressure because when, you, when you're patient, the devil's going to come and push you to make a change. But if you're patient and you know you're with God, then you're not going to be able to, the devil's not going to pressure you. That's why it says, count it all joy, brothers, when you come up to diverse temptations and trials. The word ten. The word temptations is, uh, is the word pressure in the Greek. Count it all joy, my brother, when you come up under diverse temptations. The word temptations in that verse of Christopher, one of the words meaning, the meaning of it is uh, perosmos in the Greek, which means to put pressure on you so that you're going to change your mind and you're going to jump ahead and make a change. But when you know you're stepping on Standing on God's word, you're not going to change it. You're going to continue to go on and never, never mind the situation that is changing all around you, but you're going to stay the same with God all the time. Isn't that, that's pretty good teaching. We can go home right now and say, praise God, I learned something. Yeah. B, patient means that you're going to be persistent and are able to persevere no matter what happens in your life. You know, uh, I've talked to different mentors. I've had different mentors. It's, it's important for you to have a mentor. A mentor is somebody who you can talk to, somebody who you respect and sit down. And, and, and very often than not, most people don't have a mentor, but they have uh, videotapes and books and things on, online where they go to and they can look at that. And you don't have to have a mentor that's face-to-face -face with you all the time. You can, you can be mentored by... Joyce Meyer, if you're a, a, a woman, or you could be a man too, I guess. Uh, you know, if you follow somebody like that, or, or somebody you respect, and read their material, you become like who you read after. You know, I like Brother Higgin, and, and I've learned a lot from him, you know, to love people, to be patient with people, and I wish I could be more patient, but, you know, I'm learning you know, I didn't become this great all in one day. It took me a while <laughs> to become this wonderful and lovely. Hi, everyone. It's Roma Fisher. We're, we're Spirit Alive, and we want to thank you for being our partner and friends and being a viewer. If you're a brand-new viewer, you want to contact with us, you can call us at any time. Uh, the numbers are on your screen right there. And also, you can... Go to a website at spiritalive.org and find us there and watch out what we're doing and find out more information. We want to hear from all our friends and partners across Canada. And if you haven't been a partner, we'd like to team up with you and believe God's best for you and, and teach you and give you the Word of God weekly. So stay tuned after the program. We want to pray with you. I'm a Spirit Alive partner. I've been partnering with the ministry now for a while, and I love what it's doing. I love the impact that it's having in people's lives, the change. You know, it's that spirit of faith that just changes lives. 
I'm just grateful to be a part of it. We thank God for you, our partners and friends. We encourage our viewers to share with us how Spirit Alive is helping you. Please write us or call us. We are believing God with you. Pastor Roma and Anita are celebrating 30 years in ministry this fall. To mark this occasion, we'd like to offer you Pastor Roma's autobiography, My Name is Roma, for a donation of $30. This book outlines Pastor Roma's journey from a life of poverty, addiction, and chaos to a life dedicated to God. You'll learn about his supernatural call to ministry and God's plan for Faith City Church and Spirit Alive. We also encourage you to send Pastor Roma and Anita a personal greeting to mark their 30-year ministry milestone. To receive a copy of My Name is Roma, you can contact our helpline at 807-344-1956 or email us at spiritalive at tbaytel.net. You also can call the helpline counselors during the broadcast times. Helpline counselors are available from 9.30 to 10.30 and 3 to 4 p.m. every Sunday. We look forward to hearing from you, your support in helping us share the spirit of faith across Canada. Miigwech. Hello, viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. You know, I didn't become this great all in one day. It took me a while <laughs> to become this wonderful and lovely, you know. You can tell I love myself, right? Really, really love. And I'm really humble, too. So, so C, uh, being patient means the quality of not surrendering to circumstances because circumstances will come. Being patient means the quality of not surrendering to circumstances. I'm talking about negative things that's going on that want to make you change your mind about things. You know, I, I think about different things. You know, I told myself, self, listen, you know, <laughs> talking to me, you know. So it's like, I remember thinking about school. I said, okay, if I go to school, I'll be this, this old. When I finish this, I don't want to be that old when I finish this. And I'm thinking about this now. I'm thinking still talking about school. They said, you know what, Roma? No matter what, you'll be that old anyway in four years. So go ahead and do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> so it's not going to make a difference. You're going to be in four years. How old are you going to be? And no matter what happens, you're still going to be that same age. So time is going to come and... You know, you, you can look at your own life and you look at things like, you know, I should have had a nice savings account when I was 16 years old. I should have had, you know, diff different things. I could have put away money. I could have been a millionaire by the time I was 30 <laughs> if I could have put some money away. Right? You can put money away. If you can put money away. So let's go to D. Because So we had A. Patience means to, bite, to be able to bite under pressure. B, it means to be persistent and to be able to persevere. C, it means the quality of not surrendering to circumstances. And D, it means the quality of not to succumb to under, uh, under any kind of trial. Don't let trials beat you and quit. It, 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 anybody can quit. You can quit any time, anything, any, any time. Just go ahead and quit. But it takes time. It takes some, some kind of a person who thinks and stops and says, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to quit. This is good for me. I'm going to continue on. So what happens, you know, here's something that we look at all the time. Go to Mark 11, 23 to verse 26. This is what we look at. Mark chapter uh, 11, verse 23 to 26. And I'm going to read the King James Bible. I want to show you something here that's very critical in your life because when you're believing God and you pray for something, uh, 
if you have a prayer project and you're, and you're praying for something and you start believing God, you get a promise of God, you find that promise of God, maybe you write it down or circle it around in your Bible and you look at it regularly and you look at it and you read it, maybe write it down and you try to memorize the scripture and you begin to think about it and, you, and then you pray about it and ask God, whatever, whatever it is, you said, Lord, I'm, I'm believing God for this promise you said in your word and I'm receiving that by faith right now and so, Lord, I'm accepting it right now that... What I'm asking you is according to your word. It's your will. So I receive it by faith in the name of Jesus. He say, "Woo! thank you, Lord. But then, circumstances change and tells you that you can't have that. Things, your life changes. But you prayed that prayer. Now, now the trial that you're experiencing is going gonna, gonna to tell you to deter and, and to, to quit and not, you know, uh, believe for that promise. But you did, pray for, you did pray for that prayer. There's a lot of people, perhaps even in this room right now, who prayed a lot of prayers when they thought they were believing or when they thought they were using faith, but they didn't use faith. Yes, they found the scripture. Yes, they prayed the prayer, but it wasn't faith yet. It was just mental assent or just the fact that just, oh, I agree the Bible is true, and there it is, but it's not really faith yet. So it takes time. So when, when the trouble comes, they begin to change their mind about something. Go to Mark eleven twenty three. We're talking about patience. We need patience. We need to endure to the end. We need to take, take what, have what it takes to, to move to the end and where we got the promise of God in our lives. This is not a joy service right now at this moment, <laughs> as you can tell. But we're going to get there and practice a little bit. <clears throat> Did you find uh, Mark eleven twenty three? 23? Okay, it says, For verily I say to you, Jesus, Jesus talking to his disciples, that whosoever, whosoever, and, and we qualify because we're a whosoever, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, he didn't say that if a Christian does it. I found that people who are not Christians are actually doing this. Brother Hagin talked about a lawyer who was not a born-again believer. He believed God. The, the doctor told him, you're going to die in 30 to 90 days if you don't have this operation. And so somehow his mom convinced him to go to Ramah. He sat under Brother Hagin for, for, for a healing school. And he, and he heard Brother Hagin talk about this verse of Scripture. He said, oh, I can believe that. I, I can believe that. So he began to believe that he received his healing. And he's not a believer. Did you ever notice that people in the, in the, new, in the, in the four Gospels that got healed, they weren't born again Christians? How many people know that? They were not saved. But they believed. And so they, by faith, were able to believe. The woman with issue of blood, she was not born again. The ten lepers were not saved. Huh? The, the uh, centurion, you know, the centurion's son wasn't born again, neither was the centurion. And he believed God. So we see businessmen who take... Thank you for watching the program. I believe right now if we stand in agreement in prayer that God will answer your prayer. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12 that God's ears are listening for your prayer. He's looking down. The Bible says his eyes are over the righteous and his ears are unto us, open unto their prayers. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18 verse 19, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done in my Father which is in heaven. I believe if you find the word of God, the Bible promise, and stand on it, if two shall agree, and it will be done of them, my Father which is in heaven. Jesus said that. So we trust him. He said, all things are possible to him that believes. So believing means that you're trusting him. You're expecting God to do something on your behalf because you're counting on it because of what he said in his word. So let's agree together for your need. I believe in the name of Jesus, Father, all my partners that are believing God for physical healing. The Bible says, Matthew 8, 17, that himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. You said in your word in Colossians chapter 1, 
and verse 12 and 13, that we can thank you because you have delivered us from the power of darkness. That deliverance is available for every person. I thank you, Lord God. You said in the 23rd Psalm that the Lord is my shepherd, that he will feed and he will lead and he will guide me and protect me. So I want to thank you for protection and strength for everyone that you said that you would give strength to all those that are asking for strength according to your word. You said in your word that you'll supply every one of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Thank you, Lord God, that we can overcome every single situation according to your word. You said I can uh, overcome all things by Jesus Christ. So we want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone that's sick in their physical body, that every sickness and every disease is a curse of the law, according to your word in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61, that sickness is a curse. Healing is a blessing. You said in your word in Galatians 3.13 that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Sickness, according to the word of God, is a curse, but healing is a blessing. So I want to thank you. I covenant in agreement with my partners and friends that healing belongs to them. I pray be healed right now in Jesus' name. Be delivered from drugs, from alcohol, from any demonic attacks. I pray protection over the people. I I cover them with the blood of Jesus, that protection belongs to them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Those of you that have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, this is the time right now to come to Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He sent He was sent to this world to be the savior of the world. If you receive that gift today, you will be saved. Say this prayer after me if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or savior of your life. Say this, dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. I believe he's your son. I believe he's the savior of the world. And today I invite him to my life to come into my life to save me because I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me. Make me whole. And today, I make him the Lord of my life to direct me all the days of my life. I will follow him for the rest of my days. I thank you for my salvation today. In Jesus' name, I am now born again. If you've prayed that prayer, you are now saved. Welcome to the family of God. And if you've never, if you've been away from God, all you have to do is say, Jesus, I acknowledge my sins. I acknowledge my ways. Forgive me for all my sins. I'm coming back to you. I submit my life to you. I resubmit my life. I rededicate my life to you right now. I'm coming home in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've done that, you have been rededicated. You're well on your way back. I believe that God has done it. So call us or write to us. Or give us a note or send us some messages or so that we can celebrate with you. We want to send you a package and help you grow in your spiritual walk. Remember, we'll be back again next time. We'll see you on Spirit Alive. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.